What is up everybody? So we are going to go over more questions that Ken Kratz has answered. These questions were submitted by Vegas Ranger on X. Everybody's information is linked in the description below. There's a link to Ken Kratz's book in the description below as well. So make sure to go check all of that out. Give everybody a follow and keep up to date with everything that is going on with Making a Murder. Before we jump into the questions here, I just want to thank everybody for the overwhelming positive support this uh, series of videos has gotten. One of them has a 99% positive approval rating. The other one has a 100 100% positive approval rating. This is the third one we're doing, so we'll see what this one gets, but it's absolutely unreal, the overwhelming positive support this series has gotten. It's still very, very early in the series. There's only two videos, but man, so far it has been incredible. These answers are from Ken Kratz. These are his thoughts, his opinions, and everything he believes to be true. There are a lot of people out there, of course, that don't believe what Ken Kratz is saying, but there are also a lot of people out there that do believe what Ken Kratz is saying. It's not up to me to try and sway your decision one way or the other. That is up to you to make up your mind whether you choose to believe what Ken Kratz is saying or not. I'm never going to forcefully make some, put out videos that are like, you must believe my narrative. This is 100% what it has to be because this is what I believe. That is never going to happen. I want everybody to watch and then make up their own mind as to what they choose to believe. So here we go. We're going to jump into part number three of Ken Kratz answering questions. These, again, these are from Vegas Ranger on X. The first question is... What are the legalities of a unsigned, unfiled search warrant in a court hearing? Do they hold any weight whatsoever? Your question answers itself. Any drafts, any unsigned documents, any unfiled papers have no legality, whatever that means. During the Teresa Halbach murder investigation, who wrote, typed the search warrants? The Collier County DA's office, my office, my office being Ken Kratz's office, of course, drafted the search warrants on the afternoon of Saturday, November the 5th, 2005. I called my staff into work while I had officers compile and verify facts for the affidavit. After the first weekend, most of the search warrants were able to be completed during the regular hours of the work week, again, using my staff. However, when items were found or additional information developed that needed to be included immediately, we often worked into the evening hours. Question number three. In recent questions answered to allegedly a show, that's me, you spoke about not being able to use Brendan Dassey in the Avery trial. However, you did use item FL and the hood latch DNA, which were only discovered due to Brendan Dassey. How was that allowed, yet other evidence from Brendan Dassey's trial wasn't? Only Brendan's testimony was excluded. You see, this question here is something that I have a great deal of interest in. I never really understood how they got convicted two different ways. Ken answered that question in a previous video. And while I understand what he said, it still doesn't make any sense to me uh, that that is the way that it has to be done. Just That's just truly bizarre to me. Only Brendan's testimony was excluded due to the Confrontation Clause of the Constitution. As I've mentioned, all criminal defendants in this country have the right to face their accuser, which includes co-defendants who choose to testify. We could, not, we could not call Brendan as a witness. That does not preclude... That does not preclude, however, using evidence recovered as a result of his statements to law enforcement. Should Brendan Dassey's statement have been deemed coerced, the result of improper threats or promises, the court would consider what, if any, physical evidence obtained as a direct result might be excluded. That was not the case here. 
Question number four. Just in general, the answer around the two different convictions is still confusing to all of us. Yes, it is. For the for the avoidance of any doubt, do you 100% believe that Teresa Halbach was tied to the bed with cuffs, leg irons, raped by Brendan Dassey, stabbed in the stomach, sl throat slit, carried out to the garage, shot up to 10 times, mutilated by a cutting instrument thrown into the boot of her car, taken back out of the boot, and burned in the fire pit all in the space of one night? Excellent question. Ooh, I, man, I'm interested in this answer. What I think happened might be an interesting topic sitting around a campfire, but it has no place challenging me on each separate point you have raised in your multiple choice question. I disagree. He's, I guess he agreed to only answer questions on the facts of the case, but it would be incredible to actually get his opinion on this. I May, I don't know if there's any particular reason why he wouldn't give it. I'm going to continue. Maybe he answers it. May, I don't know if there's any particular reason why he wouldn't give his opinion, but that is something that is extraordinarily interesting, I am sure, to not only me, to not only Vegas Ranger, but to everybody else. What is Ken Kratz's opinion as to what actually happened? The odds of us sitting around a campfire all together to hear this story aren't great, but he does have the opportunity to explain to everybody what he actually think did happen. Let's continue here. It's a gotcha question. It is not a gotcha question. I, people are genuinely interested in what you think happened, what Ken Kratz thinks happened. Designed to fuel dozens of other conspiracy theories, eventually leading to never ending but Kratz, but Kratz, Hyperventilation. I will not play that game. You don't even, you don't need to respond to the butt crats, butt crats, hyperventilization or whatever. You can just answer it and then ignore everything. Just put it out there. If you genuinely want to like do this, and you do obviously because you are doing it, that is a question that is extraordinarily interesting. What does Ken Kratz believe happened? Maybe he's waiting for a documentary or another Netflix special or something to draw people in to watch that particular series or whatever if he has something planned. And, and I get that, but if that's not the case, this is a perfect opportunity for Ken to answer that question. I've said before, but apparently you didn't believe me. I did not have to prove any theory. We're not asking can to prove it. He's not being asked to prove it. He's being, act, he's being asked his opinion on what he thinks happened. I did not have to prove any theory as to how it happened, where the exact time, the exact instrument used, and I certainly don't need to hear. No, but you agreed to answer questions, and if you're going to say you are just answering questions to the facts of the case, I get it. But this is a perfect opportunity to give your opinion on what you think happened. You don't have to respond to any of the people out there that are like, you're wrong, you're lying, prove this, prove that, blah, blah, blah. All of it is just your opinion, your thought on what you think happened. Whether Teresa Halbach was killed in the bedroom or the garage did not matter to the burden of proof I was required to meet. Which is absolutely ridiculous. Now this has nothing to do with Ken. The fact that he doesn't have to prove anything like that is bizarre. The justice system, I don't know if it's just like this in Wisconsin or the entire United States, the fact that you don't have to do that is extraordinarily bizarre nor whether she was just shot or strangled as well or stabbed as well or struck with a blunt forced object as well. We know for sure she was shot at least twice in the head. And that's where he ends that. I don't agree with, and who cares what I think, I don't agree with the fact that you don't have to prove any of that to find somebody guilty. That is really, really strange. And number five, and do you 100% believe that all of this is possible without either Teresa Halbach or Brendan's DNA or blood being everywhere, 
all over the five or six different crime scenes, bed, bedroom, hallway, garage, gurney, car. You totally, and I believe intentionally, misrepresent the evidence in this question. When you ask about five or six crime scenes and what was found, you are not asking a serious question. I, I couldn't disagree more with Ken Kratz on these last two, but again, these are his answers. These are what he wants to put out there. I, I want to know the answer to that. Vegas Ranger wants to know the answer to that. I've done, I have no idea how many videos I've done on this topic, but the majority of people ha want an honest answer when it comes to all of that, because it makes no sense. Even if Stephen Avery got a rug doctor and spent the next four days cleaning his bedroom carpet, his hallway carpet, you're still going to leave something behind somewhere. These people are not Dexter. This was a Dexter level cleanup. It's absolutely crazy for every theory you present as to why blood or other evidence should or shouldn't be found in places, you ignore what the jury was to decide. Given the evidence that was found, does that support verdicts of guilty? Man, I don't know. It's There's so much on both sides of that that leave a ton of reasonable doubt in my opinion it just doesn't it's a lot of it just doesn't make any sense to me if he doesn't have to do all of that stuff and all the defense has to do is prove reasonable doubt i think maybe that's not how it works that's my understanding of how it works there is a ton of reasonable doubt in this case stephen avery's dna was found where it should not have been, in Teresa Hallbach's SUV, on Teresa Hallbach's key, on Teresa Hallbach's hood latch. If you ask me about evidence that was found and how it added to the jury's understanding of what occurred, I can speak to that. Once again, asking me about the absence of evidence that you or others might think ought to be there is a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. It's things people want to know. You, Ken Kratz, might think it's a waste of time, but the people you are answering these questions for do not think it's a waste of time. Kathleen Zellner, Kathleen Zellner has made a career of asking that kind of question. Our Wisconsin Circuit and Appellate Courts have reminded attorney Kathleen Zellner often that speculative Theories and legal gymnastics about what not, but what was not found have no place when searching for the truth. Again, I completely disagree with those last two questions almost in their entirety. But that's what Ken Kratz wants to put out there. He's just leading to more questions on the same thing. Um, but yeah, it's he's thinking that people just want to know, I mean, and I could be wrong here, this is just me assuming, and that gets people into trouble sometimes, I think that he's just wants to answer questions about the facts of the case. He doesn't want to answer things about what people are wondering about, what people are speculating about, and that's what most people want to know. Most people want to know Ken Kratz's opinion on what he thinks happened, or why he thinks there was no DNA found anywhere in Stephen Avery's trailer if all of that stuff allegedly happened there. Just because Ken didn't have to prove any of that in court necessarily doesn't mean that people aren't interested in his theory of how all of that happened. I am extraordinarily interested in his theory on how all of that happened. Vegas Ranger is. And the bunch of people that watch these videos, that comment on X, that comment on these videos, Facebook, everywhere, are extraordinarily interested to know Ken Krantz's opinion. It doesn't need to be fact. It doesn't need to be evidence that was produced in the case or evidence that wasn't produced in the case. We just want to know Ken Krantz's opinion on what he thinks happened. I, I certainly know I do, and there's nobody better to give Ken Kratz's opinion on what Ken Kratz thinks happened than Ken Kratz. Now is a perfect opportunity for that to happen. 
What do you think? Let me know. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day, and I will see you again soon.